Welcome to the 2020 Virtual Ag Sighting Experience. We are really glad you can join us. We hope you'll learn a lot as you watch this video about where your food comes from and how farmers raise the animals and grow the crops that are used to make the food we eat every day. You will learn about cattle, pigs, sheep and goats, chickens and turkeys, rabbits, and a lot of different kinds of crops. If you have time later, you can check out the bonus features that include videos about horses, antique tractors, how different animals are born, and other cool things. So sit back and get ready to have fun, learn a lot, and enjoy the 2020 Virtual Ag Sighting Experience. First, I'd like to introduce you to one of our friends at Ag Sighting, Nurse Betty otherwise known as Betty the Cow. I'm so glad to see you. Welcome to the St. Joe County Fair. This is my fair. I want you to come and go for the tour all the way around, see all the things, the pigs, the chickens, and the turkeys, and the sheep, and then at the end, you will get a ride on a hay wagon clear to the other end of the midway. Oh, I've talked so much. Cattle is a general word used for all kinds of animals that most people call cows, but that is actually the name given to female cattle that have had at least one baby called a calf. The father is called a bull. A female, who has not yet had any calves, sort of like a teenager, is called a heifer, and a male who cannot become a father is called a steer. A group of cattle is called a herd, and they typically live either in a barn or out on pasture. The main feed for cattle depends on where they live and how the farmer chooses to raise them. Some cattle eat only grass and hay, while most eat a mix of grass, hay, and grains like corn. Did you know that cattle have four different stomachs? That allows them to eat things like hay and corn stalks that we can't. Of course, we all know what sound cattle make. Moo. I'm sure you've never stuck your head out the car window and yelled that while driving through the countryside, right? Cattle have tough skin that is covered with hair of different colors and lengths depending on the breed. Did you know that leather is made from dried and processed cattle skin? Leather footballs, basketballs, and baseballs are made of cattle skin, sometimes called cowhide. What kinds of food can we get from cattle? Well, you'll hear about two general kinds of food that cattle are raised for. Meat, like hamburgers and steaks, and dairy products like milk, cheese, and ice cream. Let's learn more from people who raise cattle. Okay, so these are our cattle. Um, we have all heifers right now except for one. We have a bull calf. Um, one of the babies over there looking at us um, is bull calf. So bull is a male cow that is not castrated, so it can have babies. Um, and all of these are cows. Um, besides the other little baby over there, that's a heifer. A heifer is a um, female cow that has not had babies. Um, so the difference between these and her, these are cows. So cows, they've all had babies. So a cow is a female that has had a baby, has produced a baby. Um, they all have produced milk. Um, cattle, we eat steak. We eat hamburger, we eat uh, ribs, um, and there's a lot of other things you can have with cattle. Um, so these tags, like I was talking about with sheep, they have to have, I don't know if you can see them or not, they have to have tags. It's kind of like your birth certificate. So we have birth certificates, they have ear tags, just so we can kind of identify um, that they've come from, these are our, um, RFID tags. So that means they've come from our barn. So we we have our own little um, number for Conrad Farms um, and that's assigned to us so we use for all of our cattle um, and then we also have uh, a number that we have for our pigs and stuff whatnot. Um, right now they're eating. They're just eating corn. Um, this 
corn. Uh, there's some cobs in there. Um, this is Angie. She is an Angus um, cow. So that's a breed. Um, this is um, Jan. She is a crossbred. Um, so that crossbreds are just um, like two different breeds or a couple different breeds put together. Um, so they don't have a specific breed. It's just crossbred. Um, unlike Jan, she's an Angus. So that's just, it's purebred. She's a purebred. They get a lot of hay. They eat a lot of hay. Um, and they get grain. Um, especially in the winter, just like the horses. Um, to keep them, keep them fat and happy. We do have to get their hooves to, um, trim just like the horses or we have to trim the lamb's hooves. Um, they have to get theirs done every so often. Um, she's, she might lick me. They lick you, get the salt off your hands. They're very curious animals. They're herd animals, so they like to stay together. Um, just like sheep, they're herd animals. They like to stay together. Hello, my name is Quinn Kelly. I'm Haley, and this is McToots. I've been in 4-H for nine years, and I'm here to talk to you about beef and dairy cattle. The family is called Bovidae. The mother is called the cow, and the father is called the bull. They start life as a baby called a calf, and they live. the production beef lives to be about 12 to 16 months. The group of them is called a herd. Dairy beef um, and steers, like uh, McToots here, and Holsteins are a byproduct of milk production. Production beef and steers, like breeds like Angus and Hertford, are bred specifically for meat production. All cattle have four stomachs, that is called a ruminant. They eat grass, hay, silage, and grain. Their grain includes ingredients such as corn and soybean meal. Eight pounds of feed translates to about a pound of gain on this, on the steer. There are over 1.6 million heads of cattle in Michigan and products from the cattle are things like hamburgers, steaks, roasts, and leather for shoes and jackets. Hope to see you at the cattle barn at Fair. Let me get my milk and have a drink of my milk. Oh, that is so good. Did you drink your milk this morning or have some on your cereal? You know, milk is very good for you. It's good for your bones. Makes them nice and strong. And also makes your teeth nice and strong, too. Swine is a word used for animals that most people call pigs or hogs. A mother pig is called a sow, the father is called a boar, and the babies are called piglets. There are a lot of different names we can use for a group of hogs, but the most common is a litter for piglets or a herd for adults. Swine are usually raised in barns called hog houses or pig pens, although sometimes they are raised outside. Their main feed is a mix of grains like corn and they only have one stomach like us so they can't eat everything that cattle do. The main foods that we get from hogs are ham, bacon, pork chops, and other cuts of meat. Did you know that footballs used to be made of pigskin a long time ago? They haven't been made from that for many decades. Now they're made of cowhide, but you already knew that. Nursery rhymes and toys for little kids say that pigs make the sound oink oink, but they don't really sound like that. 
If you breathe in through your nose and try to make a hard snoring noise, that's closer to what most pigs sound like. Can you make that sound? Let's learn some more from people who raise swine. Hello, my name is Lucas Yonker, and these are my pigs. Um, this pig right here is called a Yorkshire. Yorkshires are all, they're all white. This pig right here is called a blue butt. It is white with blue spots on its back. This pig over here in the corner um, is called a Hampshire, and it has a black face, black, black back, and it has a white belt going across it. A girl pig is what you call a gill, and a boy pig is called a barrow, and a sow is called, and a sow is a uh, pig that is about to give birth. Um, and sows normally give, sows normally give birth to six to 14 pigs in between there. A baby pig is called a piglet. The feed I use for my pigs is just corn and soybeans, the corn and soybean mix. So the meat you can get from a pig are ribs, which are located on, right, on this part right here. Um, you can get ham, which is located back here. You can get bacon, which is located right here. And sausage as well, right here. And you can also get pork chops. to our farm we also have pigs um this right here these are babies that's a sow so a sow is a male pig that has had a litter of babies so um to explain it a little more um uh in human form my mom would be a sow because she has had me and my siblings so she would be considered a sow um, just like your mom has had you, she would be considered a sow also. Um, but don't say that to your mom. Don't call your mom a sow. I don't think she'd appreciate that. Um, these here, this is the litter of babies. Um, she had seven. Um, and for her being a guilt, which is a female pig that has not had babies, this is her first litter um and she had seven so that's pretty good for a first time mama um only one died um there's also boars a boar is a male pig that is not castrated um they can produce babies so she had to get bred to a by a boar to produce these babies And she is a first time mama, like I said. So she's not too fond of me being by her babies, but she's being a good mama about it. She's not being mean. Sometimes they can be very aggressive when they have babies. Um, but she's letting me touch them. She's watching me, making sure I'm not hurting them. Um, that's something we look for um, mamas. Um, we do have mean mamas sometimes. Um, which is not always a bad thing, but um, it is nice when we can get in the pen with the mamas like this and um, be around the babies. There's also um, barrows. So a barrow is a male pig that is castrated, so it cannot have babies. Um, normally, um, a sow would be, or a gilt that's about to feral, would be in a crate, but she surprised us and had this litter early. So she is in this pen like this. Um, not everybody puts their their sows or gilts in farrowing crates, um, but we normally do just because um, to try to prevent the babies from getting maybe stepped on or laid on. Um, it does still happen, unfortunately, but um, we try to prevent those things. Or if we want to, um, pick up the babies, give them shots. When we clip their teeth, we clip their tails. Um, um, pigs, um, we eat pork. 
So ham, bacon, sausage, um, uh, loins, stuff like that. Um, pigs produce. So we normally, um, so yeah, we eat pork um, and we raise pigs. Um, right now we don't have that many as we normally do. Um, but these are Tamworth. Tamworth is a breed. It's a heritage breed. Um, so there's crossbreds, there's, um, there's Durox, there's Hampshires. Those are some purebreds, purebred breeds. Um, but these are Tamworths. Um, they are red. They sometimes have black spots on them. Um, they have ears that are up. Um, so they're erect ears. Um, and we typically have a couple Tamworths in the barn. We like our heritage hogs. Um, we also breed some Herefords. Um, we don't have any currently, but we normally do have some in the barn. Um, and then some crossbreds. Um, we have barreled out hogs since I was a little girl, so I've always been around them. Um, and sometimes we have to, um, I have to pull babies because I have small hands. Um, my dad um, and uncle um, have bigger hands, so it's not as easy for them to do so. If we have to get the babies out right away, I normally do that. Um, you, see how, you see how the mama did not like, I picked up her baby and made it mad. So that's being a good mama right there. She's being protective, making sure I'm not hurting it. The next animals we'll learn about are sheep and goats. We use the word sheep whether we're talking about one sheep or more than one. A mother sheep is called a ewe, the father a ram, and the baby a lamb. For goats, a mother is called a doe, a father is called a buck, and a baby is called a kid. A flock is the name for a group of sheep or goats. A weather is the name used for male sheep or goats that cannot become a father. Like cattle, sheep and goats can be raised in barns, outdoor pens, or out on pasture. Also, like cattle, sheep and goats have four stomachs, so they can eat the same kinds of feed as cattle. Sheep are covered with wool, while goats are covered with hair or mohair. Both can be different colors, from white to tan to black. Wool grows like our hair does, so when farmers shear or cut the wool from sheep, it grows right back. Goat hair is typically shed, similar to a dog's thick winter coat, as temperatures get warmer and can then be sheared or combed. You might own a pair of boots, slippers, or gloves that are lined with wool, or you might own a sweater or pair of socks made from wool or goat hair. Aside from wool or hair, we can get meat from sheep and goats, sometimes called mutton, and we can even get milk and other dairy products. Now for the sounds. Any two-year-old would tell you that a sheep goes, ba ba, and some people say that goats make the sound, ma ma. Actually, they both sound similar, with goats sounding a little higher pitched. Let's see if you can pick out the sounds of each of these animals in the videos coming up. Let's learn some more from people who raise sheep and goats. This is my lamb. Um, our sheep is also being called. Um, he is a weather. A weather is a lamb that is a male lamb that is castrated. He cannot make babies. So a ram is a male lamb that is not castrated and can produce babies. Um, and then a ewe. A ewe is either a um, it is a female lamb that has not had babies or has had babies. Sheep um, produce milk. It's in some cheeses like uh, feta or ricotta, um, some things like that. Um, we also use wool from sheep. So this is his wool. It's not very long right now because we just clipped him. I just clipped him. He is a Hampshire. That's a breed of lambs.
is Libby Graver and I'm going to talk to you about goats. So there's two types of goats. There's meat goats and dairy goats. Meat goats are raised for meat and dairy goats are raised for milk. I only have dairy goats. So this is Ferdinand and Ferdinand is a kid, which is a baby goat. And this is Frazier and she's currently pregnant and will have baby goats soon. Like I mentioned, Frazier is pregnant and when she has her babies, she will be called a dam. A dam is a mother goat. The father will be called a sire. Goats are called ruminant animals, which means they have four parts to their stomachs. Unlike people, we only have one. Even though the goats have access to pasture, which is an open, grassy area, they still need access to hay. Hay brings in other nutrients that they need for their body. And once they've eaten it, their body filters out bigger pieces and smaller pieces and the bigger pieces are brought back up and chewed again, and then swallowed again. The process of re-chewing their food is called chewing their cud. Another thing that goats need in their diet is grain. This type of grain contains pieces of corn and wheat and soybeans and other types of minerals and vitamins. So like I mentioned, this is Kevin, and Kevin is a weather, and weathers are usually raised for meat. But, in this case, Kevin is raised for something else. Okay. So like I mentioned, Kevin is used, or er, it's raised for something very special. I raise him for driving. Poultry, or fowl, is a word used for different kinds of birds we use for food, including chickens, turkeys, ducks, and geese. There is a lot we could say about all these kinds of fowl, so we'll just focus on the two most common, chickens and turkeys. A female chicken is called a hen, a male is a rooster, and a baby is called a chick. Female turkeys are also called hens. Males are toms, and babies are poults. Both animals are covered in feathers, and groups of them are called flocks. Most poultry are raised in specialized barns or coops, but they can also be raised in outdoor pens or on pastures or even yards. Fowl will eat many kinds of food, including grains, seeds, and insects. Farmers will sometimes feed them oyster shells for calcium to make their eggs shell stronger. The two kinds of food we get from poultry are eggs and meat. Hens will typically lay eggs for two or three years, and they will lay about one egg each day at most. When grown for meat, chickens are typically raised for only two to three months. Turkeys are raised for four to six months, so they are hatched in June or July for families to enjoy a turkey meal at Thanksgiving. Fowl make all sorts of different sounds. Hens make a cluck cluck sound. Roosters use their signature cock a doodle doo to wake everyone up in the morning. Toms are famous for their deep gobble gobble sound, while chicks make their gentle peep peep sounds. Let's learn some more from people who raise chickens and turkeys. Hi, my name is Libby Graber, and I'm going to talk to you about chickens. This type of chicken is called an eyes of brown. The roosters are white, and the hens are brown. A large, a full-grown chicken, like this one, is called a hen. A mid-sized chicken, almost full-grown, is called a pullet, like this one. So this is a chicken. This bumpy part on their head is called a comb. And these are their wings. And there's its feet. So this type of chicken is called a Japanese bantam. The mama is not very happy right now because I took one of her babies. But this is a baby chick. And they are a smaller breed of chicken and usually a fancier breed. So the eyes of browns, the first chickens I showed you, they lay large brown eggs and Japanese bantams lay small white eggs. So this is chicken feed. Mostly what's in it is corn and soybean meal and wheat and vitamins and minerals. And a lot of the fields that you see full of soybeans and corn is sometimes used for making feed. Hello, 
my name is Elena Kelly and I have been in 4-H for, for five years. I am here to talk to you today about poultry such as turkeys, chickens, geese, and ducks. Here we have breeding stock turkeys, a tom and a hen. If they were to be chickens, it would be a rooster and a hen. If it were to be geese, it would be a gander and a goose. And if it were to be ducks, it would be a drake and a hen. These breeding stock turkeys produce eggs that are kept in an incubator for 28 days. Sometimes they are bred in hatcheries, but these here we have at home. We get our market turkeys that we take to fair at, uh, at hatcheries, and they are incubated for 28 days. Uh, that keeps them warm. Once, uh, once they hatch, we keep them in boxes that are that have a heat lamp over them, so they can keep warm while they're chicks. And once they, for after three to four weeks, they grow feathers and and become bigger, which means that it's time to transfer them out to a bigger pen. Um, there we will feed them more grain and more water. And after 16 weeks, they um, are uh, they are become bigger and with more feathers, and are ready to be butchered. Once they are butchered and and processed, they will be sent out to for lunch meats and and uh, turkey breast and Thanksgiving dinners, and they are a great source of protein for us. Now they get their food in complete meals of uh, a, a balanced food meal um, which we get in our, uh, from pre-made collections that have nutrition labels just like your cereal box and they need all these different ingredients to grow big. Um, they, a main ingredient is corn and soybeans. Soybeans are their main so source of protein. And did you know that there are 15 million poultry birds that are produced in Michigan every year? That's 5 million more than the total population population of Michigan. We hope to see you next year at fair to come visit our poultry birds. Female rabbits are called does and males are called bucks, just like with deer and goats. Baby rabbits are called bunnies or kits. There are many different names to use for a group of rabbits, like a litter of kits, a colony, a herd, or my favorite, a fluffle. They are covered with fur and are typically raised indoors in hutches. Their main diet is alfalfa hay or sometimes grains. Rabbits don't normally make any sounds unless they are frightened. Then they will squeal. They will use their hind feet to stomp or thump on the ground when they are annoyed or they sense danger. Remember Thumper from the movie Bambi? Of all the animals you are learning about today, rabbits are the ones that many people think of more as pets than a source of food. Different rabbit breeds are often raised as pets with unique and interesting features. Rabbits raised for meat do not usually have such distinct features. Let's learn some more from people who raise rabbits. going to tell you a little bit about rabbits. Um, I have three different breeds here on the, on the table and over in the two pens over there. Um, first of all, this is called a lion head. And as you can see, he's got a little bit of a mane. I don't know how well he'll let me pick him up. <laughs> See how he's got the mane and the long hair that hangs down in his face and he's all kind of fluffy here. That's what a lion head is. And this is a male and he's strictly breeding stock. Um, 
Don't use him for anything else. The one next to him is a young New Zealand. It's probably about uh, 12 weeks old now. Um, it's one of the ones that was out of uh, one of my does that I have. He is, I don't know whether it's male or female. He's just got kind of a unique coat pattern to him. But New Zealand's are used for meat rabbits. Then over here, we've got a, oops. We've got a young blue New Zealand, a young black New Zealand. And then here's a broken New Zealand. And the reason why they're called broken is because they've got the white, but they the black, the red, the blue, whatever colors there is. Like I said, New Zealanders are, are a meat rabbit. You can also use them for pets if you want to. Um, and then you've got the Californians. They're the ones that you see all the time over at the fair. Mostly in the pens are your Californians. Um, I've got a buck and a doe here, which I'm going to keep for putting back into my breeding program. And... Um, and they're another one of the big meat rabbits. Now, a little more facts on them. Mom's a doe, dad's a buck. The little ones, when they're first born, are born without any hair. And so you can't really tell what color they're gonna be unless you know what, what breed they are. Like the cows will start all, all pink and then they'll start turning white and then their color points will come in on their ears, their nose, their tail, and their feet. But you can see these guys have a little bit of gray, which you know, they'll also come out black. These guys might get a little darker yet. Um, and that's how they start out. And they open their eyes about seven to 14 days. And they come on the nest box at three weeks old. And a little fact that I didn't know until last year when I caught one of my does, one of the batches of babies trying to eat, they actually lay on their backs and nurse off of mom on their backs. So she sits over top of them and they flip over and they uh, lay on their backs and suck off of her. So um, normally, like I said, fair week you normally see mostly cows. You see some, you see some New Zealands, but not too many. Um, and they're mostly probably going to be the black ones. Um, I know I have seen, there's some other breeds over there, like the French Lop, that's a breeding one, breeding stock rabbit. And um, there is also um, Flemish Giants, which they are big. They're about twice the size of a regular size California. Which, like I said, these guys are all roughly about 18, 12 to, no, they're... 16 to 18 weeks old. I'd have to look at the calendar to tell you exactly. But they're in that range. So, in the diet on these guys, they get free-fed pellets. Um, I just stuck these two in this, these, this cage for right now for this video. So, um, once I'm done videoing, the one's going to be moved, the one will stay, and I'll get food and water dishes in for them. And these guys are just in their carriers, which that's what the kids use. Take them back and forth to the show arena. Usually they have a three, three compartment carrier like this one here. Um, so that's what they use to transport them. here and, and see some other things. Let's see, what else could we look at? Oh, I'm getting hungry. I guess I'll stop and have a bite of lunch. Oh, this corn is so good. You know corn's good for you. Makes you strong along with your milk. And makes you smart in school so you can learn a lot. You know, we've been doing this for a long, long time. I've done this 
Oh, I'm such an old bossy cow. I probably had your moms and your dads, and I bet maybe even your grandparents come to my fair and come see all my friendly animals. I'll follow you along here and come see you. Oh, my goodness. You walk too fast for this old cow. I think I'm just going to lay down. I'm just going to lay down and take me a nap. Oh. Enjoy. Bye. Farmers grow so many different kinds of crops, it would take a very long time to describe them all. So in this next section, listen for some of the different kinds of crops and some of the foods that can be made from those crops. Some of them you probably eat every day. Linda Klein here from MSU Extension. This is your last stop on your virtual egg sighting tour. And what's our last stop called? Farm to table. That's right, farm to table. We're gonna talk about some of the crops that we grow in our county that you might put on your table. So you're wondering why do we have the umbrellas? Well, because we're smart. We're standing under irrigation. And we don't know when the farmer set this irrigation to turn on. So there's a lot of water that comes out of these. And is that water warm or cold? Freezing cold. It is freezing cold. The other thing that you need to know, sometimes farmers put some chemicals in that, like maybe some fertilizer. So before you would ever run underneath an irrigation system, you need to ask that farmer. So the irrigation system moves, it has tires, and it slowly goes through the fields. Sometimes it can take two to three days to do that. So some farmers are lucky enough to have irrigation and others have to rely on good old mother nature, that rain. We are at a field corn field. Field corn, we can use that to shovel into furnaces, a special furnace, or to feed livestock. It can be made into plastic bags and even plastic disposable diapers. So this is really a field trip, right? Even though it's virtual, well, we are going to make some trips to the fields. I hope you have some walking shoes on because you might get tired because we're going to move. So we'll see you at the next stop. Okay, we're back. We walked across the road here to another field. Again, I'm under irrigation and I don't want to get drenched because why? Because that water's freezing cold. This is a green bean field. I don't know if you can see some of these beans. And you can find those beans in the frozen section of your store in a bag like this, or in the canned good aisle. The beans in this can came right from the field next to my house. Am I making you hungry? Not yet? Well, let's keep moving. Let's go to the next field. So here we are at a soybean field. We grow thousands of acres of soybeans, just like we grow thousands of acres of corn. And what's the size of an acre? It's about the size of a football field. So imagine that, thousands of football fields. So we're gonna talk about the soy. I have my little farm girl helper here. She's got some fuzzy pods. When it gets ready to be harvested, it turns brown. In her other hand there, she's got soybeans. So this field behind us, this is about ready to be harvested. Actually, it's ready to be harvested because in the background, there's somebody that's combining the soybeans. So some of the things that we get from soybeans would be ink, paintballs, lotion. It could go into some medicine, even tires. But people, we need protein. Hey, little farm girl, why do we need protein? Because it gives you a strong it does, it gives you strong muscles. Give me some big muscles. I hope everybody out there gave me some big muscles too. Some people though, they don't get protein from meat. They're called vegetarians. So they may eat soy products like soy nuts, soy margarine, the veggie burgers, ice cream, all that good stuff, right? 
Okay, so I think we're going to be going to our next field. See you in a few. Well, now we're standing in the middle of a seed corn field. Why do farmers plant seed corn? Well, we need more seed to plant more corn. Some of you may have older brothers and sisters that detasseled for a seed corn company. We do have a town in Michigan, and it's called the seed corn capital of the world, and that's where I'm from. Okay, we're gonna head to the next stop. Well, we just took a short walk across the road. Did we get here too late? This field looks a little different. That's because it's gonna be harvested pretty soon. You didn't get to see it when it had nice green plant on top with maybe some white flowers or purple flowers. But if you look down at the ground, you're gonna see that there's mounds of dirt. And underneath, that means that this is a root vegetable. So I'm gonna give you some clues. Let's see, sometimes we eat this vegetable, we could eat it mashed, we could have it baked, we could eat french fries, or maybe we could eat it as a snack out of a bag. So I think you've guessed it. They are potatoes. We grow what we call chippers. We slice them really thin and they go into potato chip bags. So we've only got a couple more fields to go, so let's go. Okay, here we are at one of my favorite crops. I think this crop is so pretty. Do you know what it is? This is called sorghum. And we can use this in baking or cooking. It's like a thicker sweet syrup, thicker than pancake syrup. But what do we use this for? To feed birds. To feed the birds. It goes into bird seed. Well, I don't know about you, but we've been walking a long time. We've walked all around my house. So this was our last field. Now I have to go set up a couple tables. So we'll see you in a few. Oh, look, our little girl sleeping. She must be really tired from all the walking she did in the fields and helping her grandma out. She's so tuckered, she probably needs to hit the hay. Gotcha. So here we are back at the barn. And we're gonna pick up where we left off. We were at the sorghum field and that sorghum was grown for cooking, baking, that sweet thick syrup. Well, we also grow sunflowers. You can get sunflower oil for cooking and baking. You could have sunflower seeds as a snack, but the sunflowers that we raise around here is for bird seed. Corn. Again, we grow thousands of acres of corn. When I show you this, usually kids go, oh, it's baby corn. But really, you can get corn like this in a bag. You could put some hot oil in a pan, put kernels in, make sure you put a lid on, otherwise you're gonna have something come all over the kitchen floor. Still don't know what it is. How about if I show you this? Yes, it's popcorn. You usually probably put it in a microwave. More corn that we grow, sweet corn, corn on the cob. Some of you eat it this way, some of you twirl it. You can find that in the frozen section of your store in a bag or in the canned good aisle for canned corn. Food grade corn that we grow is called bent corn. We can grind that up. We could make this corn meal and it could cover something that you can eat on a stick. Any ideas? Corn dogs. Sometimes you get corn dogs at the fair. Other corn products would be corn flakes, crackers you can make out of corn, some cereal out of corn, um, lots of good things, yummy things. Here's a thing that we grow. Of course, everybody knows what this is. This is a tomato. And I have a lot of kids that say, I don't like tomatoes. And I say, 
Do you eat spaghetti? Do you eat pizza? Pizza has tomato sauce on it. Of course, it's got dairy on it, the cheese. It's got sausage on it from pigs. And the crust is made out of wheat. And for you that don't like tomatoes, I'm sure you dip things in this, like those French fries or your corn dogs. I love this crop. This is one of my favorites to watch while it grows. Usually looks like tall green grass. Farmers get two crops out of this. The top part, that is wheat. You get wheat kernels. You grind that up into flour. And the wheat, of course, makes bread. It makes cookies, cakes, all those things that you don't like to eat, right? But the bottom part, farmers use this for bedding. We use mattresses and pillows and sheets and blankets to keep us warm and dry. But livestock farmers use the straw. That's what it's called. One day, maybe you went on a hay ride. I have a little bale here. Actually, what you were sitting on was straw. In the old days, hay was cheap. Now straw is cheaper. Plus, with all the allergies, you would be sneezing your head off. This is another root vegetable. We showed you potatoes, but the fields had the mounds. Carrots would be growing under mounds. The top part used to be nice and green and lacy. The carrots we grow go into soup, like this vegetable soup. Now, this is my favorite fruit. We grow lots of watermelon in the county. Of course, watermelon, if you look around the fields, you might see these boxes. Do you know what's in those? Bees, bees are in there. So they help make those watermelons sweeter. And of course, we get honey from bees. One other thing that we grow, now we don't eat this, but maybe you could put it on your table. These are gladiolas. So you can see rows and rows of beautiful colors of flowers. So we're gonna take just a short break. We're gonna come back and I have to reset the table. All right, we're almost finished. It's gonna be getting dark soon. You know, farmers work from sunup till sundown and even beyond. Wanted to make sure though that we cover this table here. This is called My Plate. And maybe you've seen this icon on some packages or on a poster in your cafeteria. The United States Department of Agriculture developed this as a guideline to show you what's good to put on your plate and so you can be healthy. Half your plate should be fruits and vegetables. The protein that you eat should be meat with not a lot of fat in it. It could be fish, nuts, beans, eggs. Half the grains that you eat should be a good whole grain, like that popcorn that we talked about and that's a great healthy snack. And then of course your dairy should be low fat or fat free dairy. Another thing that we need to talk about a little bit is the nutrition facts label. That's on every product. That tells you what you're eating or drinking. There's an ingredient box that will show you all those items in your food. Okay, we are gonna look at some of these plates. This plate here from wheat is your toast and your pancakes. Of course, we have a lot of maple trees in the state of Michigan, so you can put some syrup on those pancakes. We have the egg that comes from poultry. You learned about poultry. Your sausage and bacon, you learned about pigs. This is apple juice, and we didn't even get a chance to talk about the orchards. We grow so many different kinds of apples in the state of Michigan. We grow grapes, and of course, with the apples, we're getting close to fall here. Uh, we'll have apple cider, and a lot of people eat those sweet little things with the apple cider, of course, donuts. The cereal here, two crops in that bowl. One side is wheat and one side is corn. This plate, that beef patty, you learned about beef cattle. You learned about potatoes for your French fries, and we learned about potato chips. And of course, tomatoes, for you dippers out there, there's the ketchup. We learned about dairy cattle and goats, where we get some of the dairy products from. Cheese, yogurt, milk, ice cream. Nobody likes ice cream, right? 
this plate, you have the potato again, that's a baked potato. You have chicken, you have carrots. And this plate, you have your sweet corn, your pork chop coming from pigs, and the green beans. Of course, you have to have dessert, so we have watermelon. And it's okay to have something like this once in a while, and that's coming from wheat. That muffin comes from wheat. Of course, you go to the store, you see some of the products like this. I always say be smart and wipe that cart handle because there's a lot of germs out there. So, I don't know about you, but I'm tired from walking in the fields and showing you all the food. The next time you sit down, think about the farmers that help put that food on your plate and the grocery store workers. Farmers work from sunup to sundown and even beyond. So the big question, did I make you hungry? Then I've done my job. I'm gonna go over, sit in one of those chairs and watch the sunset over the fields. I hope you had a good time on your ag sighting experience tour and I'll see you next time.